Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Goedemiddag, dames en heren. Molweni, manene, namanene kazi. And a very warm welcome to the Checkers Plant Kitchen, powered by Simple Truth. And our chef is the lovely Jane Nshuti, who... Jane, have you paid all these people to be here? Because I literally I, did. So I was like, if you do not come, you are not going to eat my food ever again. So <laughs> you are forced to come. Like a fan club. It's excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, for, 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 for being here. And thank you very much for joining us as well. Please come and join us. Take a seat, ladies and gentlemen. It's free. You don't have to pay. And let me introduce Jane and Shuti while those two ladies consider whether they'll come in or not. Uh, Jane is a, a plant-based African food edu educator and founder of Tamu by Jane. She's uh, got a desire to nourish stomachs, souls, and minds and her recipes and food philosophies intertwine to deliver knowledge about food security, community, and a passion for African foodways. And uh, Jane has overcome great adversity to make a positive impact by helping families eat healthier meals while embracing their African heritage. So please give her a warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I hope we are going to learn together. I'm still in this journey. I'm still learning as I go as well. Uh, today we're going to make something different. Um, and we're going to use two of my favorite ingredients as um, star ingredients, I will say. And we're going to use that. Um, it almost looks like what they call madombe, right? But it's actually a little bit different. You know, madumba, when you cook them, it becomes a bit slimy. You can literally just peel the skin like that. It's like a smaller version of arrowroot. And um, Nigerians will call it kokoyam. So <laughs> that's what we are going to use today to make uh, a gnocchi. So the reason why I like using this is, how, is because it's starchy. You don't need to add flour in it. The cooler it gets, the harder it gets. So you just blend it and then it, in, on its own it becomes the dough. We are still cooling it. Uh, either arrowroot, have you used? Yes, yes. I'm sure you have all seen arrowroot flour, right? We? Madumbi. I think you can uh, just make sure that you don't boil it too much because it's softer it's softer than um, than arrowroot and then my second favorite ingredient that we are going to use is this who knows what this is moringa yes it's actually uh, some West African country call it abadaya which means a tree which never dies and is also known as a miracle tree which means like in the ancient african apparently it's originated from india but it's been used throughout africa for medicinal purposes that's why it's also known as a, um, a miracle tree because it's literally a miracle it can <laughs> it can heal anything and everything and if you grew up in um an African home, you know how your mothers will find all these herbs to really like come up with medicine for stomach ache and so on. And just knowing that this, it's a really good substitute for a lot of things, especially if you're on a plant-based diet. It has a lot of protein as well. So they actually used to add it in in the soups and so on in the replacement of meat doesn't taste like meat but to increase the protein content of that if you want to smell it doesn't really smell like anything so we are going to use it to make pesto but we are also going to add the normal pesto ingredients so that it comes out looking like actual pesto <laughs> okay uh, I'm waiting for the blender. It's coming. It's coming. Just be patient with us. <laughs> it will be here in any minute. Um, so the, I know that the, the recipe will be available, but some of the ingredients we are going to use, it's, um, we are going to add the creaminess using the coconut cream into, into our sauce. 
and then we are going to add uh, some veggies as well like tomatoes and uh, mushroom and so on but the first we are going to make the pesto we are what we are we've already boiled that because it was going to take forever if i was going to boil it with you and we are cooling it so that we can actually pass it through the blender in order for it to be to huh there we go <laughs> oh thanks <laughs> so um the reason one of the reason why i'm so passionate about cooking with this type of herbs african ingredients my sister is there she can testify uh, growing so we we are from rwanda <laughs> we are from rwanda and uh, when we moved to south africa we lived in a place called Kanyamazana, it's a township actually in Pumalanga. And whenever we go to church, there was a bush full of amarath. But nobody ate them, like nobody ate them. I don't think they knew what it was supposed to do. So all of us as siblings, I think my dad as well. <laughs> Well, like, because we grew up eating amarath every single day. It was like, um, it was our staple at home. So we went into the bush and we are picking amarath and everyone is looking at us as if we are mad, like we are crazy. And, and it was free and so we just picked amarath, we went home. My mom made a really beautiful stew to eat with the pap. And then people, we kept going, and then we were like, why? why? Why are you picking up things? We are like, this is food. And then it made me realize that people actually have food in their backyard, and they could easily go to bed hungry without realizing that they are surrounded by food. And that is what the food ecosystem has become. We have become so dependent on supermarkets and so on that we don't recognize what is in front of us and for example i had to to go all the way to atlantis to find <laughs> there is a lady with a tree with the house that <laughs> so to, to find this and that is really what like things which are good for us is very hard to find them in our normal stores but this are free things that people actually have in their backyard and they don't use them. I remember asking, so how much do I, how much do I pay you for this? Like, nobody has ever asked me for it. Like, it's just a tree in our backyard. So, and this, yet this, in other African countries, it's a miracle tree. It's something that people depend on to survive. And if every time I cook, I can inc include such an ingredient, ingredient in my food and cooking, I think, um, sorry, there's a lot happening here. If I could include something like that to just show that we are surrounded by food, it will help people to be liberated from all these things that we have being enslaved in especially depending on supermarkets for every little thing and also just to put african food in front uh, one of the things that we ate a lot growing up was sorghum we <laughs> i was telling somebody yesterday that in rwandan weddings back in the days the cake was a sorghum pup and then they would take like um, a string instead of using a knife they had the grooms will be here the bride will be here and then they'll use a string to cut the path and that is the wedding cake and we had sorghum um, porridge every morning we had sorghum pap so like it was part and parcels of our everyday life then uh, we go to Kenya it was mini meal it was maize you know i was like okay shocking shocking now we are like leaving the sorghum slow by slowly and then we get to south africa sorghum is fed to animals <laughs> i was like okay if you go to pick and pay you will not find sorghum and 
I feel like the more we talk about this amazing food, which is not only good for us, but for the planet, which um, they don't need much for us in order for them to grow. They don't need water. They, do, they just grow. I feel like we are not only going to be helping the planet, but we are also going to have cheaper meals which are actually good for us so that is really why that's where my whole cooking philosophy is, comes from is it working hey okay great can i can i okay so chances are most of us know how to make pesto we just put things in the blender and you blend and but chances are none of you has made pesto using a moringa so <laughs> so today that's what we are going to do um just like any pesto i have got uh pine nuts this is going to be a vegan pesto so uh, i don't have cheese even though i was hoping to have a vegan parmesan or um a, or nutritional yeast but checkers didn't have so <laughs> so i was like it's fine later on to add the creaminess to it we are going to use uh a bit of cream cheese just in cooking you really have to to do that like you have to make changes as you go when i came here and i realized there's no nutritional yeast or the cheese i was like we are dead and then i was like okay it's fine we are just gonna make a plan um normally when you use the post and mortar you start with the harder stuff you pound as you go and we are not using a post and mortar we are using a food processor because we have advanced um we do have a mortar here for you oh we had one earlier that's gone but it's, yeah. it's a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work <laughs> and then um we are also going to use basil to just also give it that paste of flavor um i will obviously start with the I will only put the liquids later uh, so that we can give our stuff um, time to blend first. And then I thought I like pestos with baby spinach because it keeps the green color. Like when you, uh, even if you heat it a little bit, it does not all. Have you ever seen that pesto uh, pasta, but it looks yellow? Ne? Like you like what's happening and i found when you add actually spinach it keeps that vibrant uh green color to it okay um i could help you with that yeah this chefs aren't supposed to do this amount of hard work <laughs> no we're just supposed to look pretty and then just exactly. put things in okay Okay, so we are adding the baby spinach in. And I do have a garlic, do I? I do, I do. I saw it. Okay. And garlic. I am obsessed with garlic. Um, put garlic in everything. They gave me two, so I will do two. Okay. Mm. Do you press the handle? Right here. Yeah. This young lady worked it. That's why Did she was supposed to be my sous chef today. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so. <laughs> she might keep <laughs> So we will. First, do this and then we'll add our star ingredient this will add more more um it's a bit earthy than obviously the ingredients in here but it, it you actually won't taste much of it but i like adding it because 
I just believe it's more healthier. I mean, who doesn't want a miracle in every meal that they make, right? We want a miracle in every dish that we make. Uh, the recipe will be available, right? I don't have to mention how many. Yeah. So. Oh. So and then I will add our moringa. Hmm. Okay. It's already smelling nice. Um. Then I am going to add. They, they didn't give me salt. Then before I add, do you, do you have? I saw a hand. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I have um, some lemon lemon juice. I see they just add the freshness to everything. Like that's why we use it really like you don't we don't you know when you see a recipe everything has lemon then a dash of lime at the end it's not for fun it's actually important it's an important ingredient because it adds that freshness of acidity to everything that makes everything palatable and because especially when you are doing something where you are adding a lot of oil like we are going to put a lot of oil oil it really cuts down into that Okay. Okay, I will use that. They didn't give me any salt. Salt. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we'll add some lemon. Okay. And then we will add our olive oil. So you are like, um, I thought you are an African food waving person. Why are you making an Italian inspired? <laughs> Inspired dish. I'm sure some of you are thinking in that, that direction. That was my question from the get-go. <laughs> An African woman making gnocchi. Very so interesting. My, my thing is, um, you find ingredients, African ingredients, then you adapt it to anything. And that is really what is important. You find flavors which people are used to, and you find like things which works with people's taste buds. And then you just incorporate it using African ingredients. And for me, I'm not a, a, a diehard, I need to cook my mother's dishes. You know, th we have all those people who are really stuck there, but then it's very hard to reach out to as many people as possible because you are bringing something that people, it's not yet, um, accustomed to people's taste buds that's why i'm like how can i actually make an italian dish using ingredients which grows in my homeland does that make sense for me that is the whole concept just find a way of adapting whatever you have into what you like so if i eat uh, a pesto somewhere and i really like it why why not use an African ingredients to t get exactly the same taste? So, and then we will add some salt. Haven't tasted it yet. Okay, I hope this salt is salty. Do you guys have any questions for me? Anything goes. It is a conversation, so if you'd like to ask any questions, don't hesitate, don't be shy, we won't charge you. You're more than welcome. Just uh, raise your hand so I can bring you the microphone. There's a question there. Ah, thank you. Were you always interested in cooking? Um, was I always interested in cooking? I 
think so. I think so. I, so let me tell you uh, a story. Um, when I was a child, cooking was a chore. Like there was a time cooking was a chore because we we didn't we didn't have a normal childhood. <laughs> um, growing up, we we had like some sort of a crisis in my home country. You probably all have heard of it. To a point where some of us ended up in like refugee camps, found ourselves in situation where there were no parents and so on and somebody had to be the cook at some point, which was me. And I was really young. And then it was a chore. But the more I did it, actually, I grew into it. I loved it. And then I found myself that that's really what I enjoyed doing. Even though um, as a career, it wasn't always something I thought I could do. Until, until actually later, I was like, oh, this thing actually can, I can turn my passion into a career. But initially I was like, I really have to do this. Then the more I did it, the more I actually loved it. Yeah. Okay, I think this is done. Um, I wish I had, I think they will give me another one of these because this is our cooked arrow roots. I asked them to, to, we just boiled it, but we need to now, actually now turn it into a dough. The powder is extremely strong. It's super concentrated. It's, um, you will taste it like, you will definitely taste it. I have tried it a couple of times. It wasn't. It wasn't nice. So, but surprisingly, it's just that people don't know there is a lot of moringa trees around. Some of us didn't know that those were moringa trees. Just like um, I think we will need to blend this as well. I can even try to use the post and mortar if it's available or we need to but separate. Okay. So if there is another one like yeah, we've this. Got this one here. Okay. So yes. Yes, you have to peel it. Um, we, we we were running out of time so we really had to make the pieces super tiny. Um, but yeah, you have to peel it completely and then boil it with a little bit of salt. The way you will probably potatoes, you're about to use for gnocchi, except that with the potatoes, yeah, you will add a lot of flour. Can you see how hard it is? It's cooked. It's not that it's not cooked. <laughs> it's cooked. Then you have to like then pan fry it a little bit. These things are nice. <laughs> but we are waiting for the lid. Hmm? I know. And it's so quick. <laughs> the one at home I keep having to open it and pull things down. I'm like... <laughs> but this was like... Yo. Yeah. Um, so the way I shop is very interesting. Um, you will find me at the train stations. You will find me at corner shops in different um, diaspora shops because so in in Cape Town there's a lot of foreigners and surprisingly people don't actually people eat food from home I, I feel that's what really still connects them to home so there's a lot of a lot of shops from like um, for example if you go to Parklands there's a lot of Nigerian and Senegalese in that side so you find a lot of Nigerian shops there if you go to Salt River or one big. There's a lot of people from Congo. There's you will find it. There is 
a gentleman from Rwanda, he literally opened uh, a WhatsApp group saying, hey, I'm bringing things from home. Now he has a big shop because all Rwandans, that's where we shop. Uh, I'll be like, I, I will see a message that there is green bananas. I'm like, I'm like I'll, I'll tell my husband, don't come home. First go, <laughs> first go and get the green bananas. Because I feel that's really what keeps us connected. Food, food is a connector. And that's really what keeps us connected to our heritage and our background. And I feel like that's also something... Do I do that? We need to introduce to introduce to the next generations, and you know, as we go. It was not cold enough, I guess. Hmm? Supposed to get thick and not smoothie. I'll just keep going until it becomes more sticker. But these things are powerful, I must say. So that is how we shop. You really, there is a lot of stores, but unfortunately, most of these things, but I've seen that food and or food lovers market has started to bring most of these items in there. Um, that's the only other common space that I have seen it. Otherwise, you have to go. Like, the way there is Asian stores, like Chinese supermarkets, is exactly the same thing with African supermarkets and so on. And that's where we go, because we won't find most of these ingredients in in pick and pay. Sorry? What else can you make with arrowroot? What else can you make with arrowroot um, arrow is a question. You know what I like making? I like making crisps because they come out perfect. It's because you just, because they are very, uh, they are very starchy. They are very starchy. So once you do the, you, Great. Yeah, use a mandolin too. <laughs> and then they're small and tiny and immediately you take them out of the the fryer, they're perfect. Mm. Can, where's the one that's there? Come. <clears throat> you remember the one you powdered? The one you... Did you put it in the fridge? Yes. Can I see how... Once again, ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder of our uh, fantastic sponsors. Thank you to uh, Checkers, okay, uh, McCain, Cape Talk, Hershey's, La Crusade, Kitchen Aid, uh, Banks Kitchen uh, Smalls, uh, Food24 for communication, Weekend Argus, and a host of other associated partners. Okay, I'm going to get the one that we put in the fridge. Because of time, we did not give it enough time to cool enough. So the cooler it gets, the harder it gets. As it cools, it gets hard. I don't know if that makes sense. So when it's still hot, it becomes like porridge. <laughs> so I want to see what happened to the one. Um, this is a much cooler one, but it's not cool as well. It's not completely cool. Cooking in the... It's, a, it's, it's an exercise. <laughs> not even that. <laughs> it's like survivor. Things, survivor things cooking. Things don't always go. <laughs> as out, to go. Outwit the machinery. Outplay the conditions. <laughs> yes. So, um, it's nice to see it to you as well. It does, eh? That's <laughs> what we said yeah, with the first demo, right. it always, or the, the last demo. It always uh, looks so easy when chefs do it, but when we mm. see them challenged, we know that it's not just us. 
Yo, it's it's an exercise. So I I feel like it's not cool enough. So I may have to if you're in a hurry, this is when you end up adding a bit of flour because we need to get this food happening. So we are going to do that. But if you allow it to cool, you won't have to. Just put it in the blender. It was can you see it's already sticky? Can you see? Just look at the consistency. It's the same pot, the same amount. But look at the consistency of this. Can you see? And then look at the consistency of this. So the longer we keep this, the better it gets. So, hi Olivia. So we are going to add a bit of flour. They have given me some. They knew. <laughs> Even though I told them I don't want flour, I want to keep it gluten free. Also, yeah, the beauty of the mo most African uh, grains and um, roots, obvi obviously, they are gluten free. So, for those people who complain about gluten tolerance, it's the first place to start. And so, that's one of the the benefit. Also, apart from that, they are drought resistant almost all of them i was just asking my sister now if she knew what folio was and she was like i have no idea i'm like and you call yourself african so folio is like a tiny little grain from it's it, it's called an ancient grain um in west africa they used to call it poor people's food but apparently that is also the same food that pharaohs used to eat because it was really nutritious and so on. And the reason for new, yeah, so the reason why they, were, they used to call it poor people's food was because you could throw it anyway, it will grow. It just didn't need any care. And so it grows like bushes and so on. And and now I've seen that it's make, then it became a forgotten food because we adopted all this Western way of eating and so on. And then we ended up forgetting the food actually our ancestor lived on. But now I saw it, it has been making a comeback. But you know way <laughs> in America. So they're getting it from all this West African country, then shipped to America. If you if you get it in, I tried to buy some online the other day, and 500 grams was 200. And then I asked a friend of mine from Ghana, please, how much a phone you that size? Like, oh, it's everywhere. It's like. We, people don't even buy it. I'll bring you some when I come. I'm like, so why is it expensive here? Once again, because nobody knows about it. Those who know about it, there are few. So when it comes, it comes expensive because of transportation, I guess. Okay. I think we can work with this now. I need a, a little pot now. I just need a pan, pan. Yeah, or a pot to just make small. I don't know how, I do have a chopping board here, so I, I hope I can use it to just cut any other question is it okay the pan yeah so i'm not i normally don't make them like fancy and small the way the normal ones are made. I made them big. <laughs> okay. So 
so this is how it's supposed to be when it's actually cooled completely i i didn't even ask for flour because i knew i won't need it but i need it today um okay if you guys don't have a question i have questions um my first question is what is it that you appreciate about african food oh are you familiar which african like proper african food are you actually familiar with I love that people mostly eat with their hands uh. or with a spoon. Yeah, that's what I love. Eat with your hands and it's a communal food, it's sharing. It is. And you know what? There is actually something people don't understand about. One of the reasons why people actually eat with their hands is because it really connects the whole body. Like you, the minute that you pick up a spoon to eat, you are already disconnecting the whole thing and growing up we used to the visitors used to know that the food is coming because the first thing we will do they will see one of us coming with a packet of water <laughs> and then we will pass wash their hands and then they knew that food was coming and that was really the first preparation of oh get excitement for food we didn't need to tell you that food was coming you will see the water and you know so then that i think is also my highlight even with the i ran a small space at maker's landing and um, one of the first thing i do with my customer before we give them food we actually first wash their hands we wash their hands and we're like oh you know you you can actually we even encourage them to eat with their hands as well Um, I was going to say that African food is versatile. Mm -hmm. So if you look at sorghum, for example, you can make porridge, you can make pap, you can make salad out of it. So although African food is considered traditional, you can either make it traditional, but mm -hmm. you can also modernize it, you know, mix it with some salad, sprinkle it on salad and so forth. So I love it that it's versatile and healthy. Most of African food, they don't need oil, you know, like mm -hmm. maize meal, mm -hmm. you can make pap, porridge and just other stuff. Yeah. And you know the other thing I, I love about the way we grew up and the way we cooked was that we didn't need a lot of spice to make food tasty. We actually used a lot of natural um, greens to actually add flavor into the food without adding condiments and so on. It was just natural. Anyone else? Question, comment? So, I'll just shadow fry them a little bit. Hope I'm not used to doing So this too is much. the gnocchi part. Well, in 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 theory. In my in theory, it okay. didn't. It didn't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as in my head as i normally it, it comes out but i think it will be delicious it has salt and that's what is important <laughs> okay mm. yeah I need to wash my hands yes i'm listening Okay, so as I know Nyuki, um, from my own knowledge, you boil it. Does it come the same? And I can see you frying. Does it come the same uh, if, you, uh, if you boil it? Mm -hmm. I can see you frying it. Is there a difference if you boil it? Um, so, the plan was actually not to boil it at all. It's just that I added a little bit of flour. And the reason why is because it had the reason why we boil it is because it has got a lot of flour inside so but normally because with arrowroot 
we don't add flour. Like I, I mentioned earlier, um, it does not need it when it's cool. You see, so then why are you bo why why are you why will you be boiling it if it's already been boiled? Yeah. Okay. It seems to be quite a nice aroma. If you if if you'd like to uh, have a sniff. <laughs> I'm not okay, sure. If I it's think just I need a fork instead. Do I have a fork? Something fork. smaller. Sorry guys, there's a lot happening in the kitchen. <laughs> mm -mm. So yeah, that's why, and the, re the reason why I don't use potato is exactly for that reason. Because I don't want to add flour into it. And I feel like um, it becomes more cleaner, the whole thing just becomes more cleaner and more 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 or less dense i don't know yeah hi today i'm using you i am one. using you so yeah that's why i make it okay, i think my heat is a lot it's very high let me try to reduce it in a different kitchen from what you normally cook it. <laughs> it's an extreme sport as well. Oh, I just switched it off. Easy. You can then reduce it a little bit. Turn it right, and is that okay? They are looking really nice. So basically what this, the lesson you are learning for today is that plan in advance. <laughs> Make sure your arrow root is cool. I've also got a question. Um, okay. Yours are very, they're very brown. Do you want them to be uh, crispy? Is, are you going for like a crispiness? Remember, or? So what we are going to do after now, um, we are going to actually make a little bit of a sauce with that and mushroom and then we'll put it in. It won't be as crispy. So we're trying to avoid it being also too wet once that is done. Um, can I ask, do you find that people are open now to appreciating the wisdom and knowledge in African food? Or do you think there's still, you know, there's always that thing that we appreciate stuff that's abroad and overseas. That's a good question. Foreigners, yeah. The time has come now for us to actually embrace what is our own. Um, I find that foreigners do appreciate it. A lot actually so whenever for example at makers landing whenever we have boards or we have just people who are not from africa that's what they want they're like oh we've been looking for african food everywhere and we couldn't find it and but local people not as much i don't i haven't found the interest in some of them and it's it's very sad that we we still appreciate foreign food more than we appreciate our own i don't know it's just that it's just still and that's why i asked the first question i asked because it still feels like there's this perception that our food is not good enough there is still that, that our food is not good enough. And I'm just going to reduce, I feel like the oil is a lot. And we already have a lot of oil in there. Um, then I'm just going to brown our mushroom and uh, our tomatoes. But I feel like it's, uh, it's only a start. We will get better. It's, for example, we host... Um, 
Thank you. We host African Feast where we like come together, sit, tell African stories and cook, wash our hands, eat with the, our hands, you know, like African style. And it was never intentional that people who come to these events are foreigners. Like, we just put the word out there. And I found a lot of students from overseas and who are interested into these kinds of experience and less of our people around in the community. I'm like, why? <laughs> so... with the menu I we we've, we've lived in different places like in Kenya and Rwanda and mostly East African so I took my favorite dishes from different spaces that we've lived and that's really what I made the menu of we have like cassava leaves soup and we have got chapatis coconut beans we've got green banana curry you know those are the type of dishes we make and people actually seem to really like some of them are skeptical that like, banana curry <laughs> but i'm like it's not sweet i promise <laughs> and then afterwards they will come like this food was really really good I'm like i know i made it <laughs> mm -mm. So yeah, that's those are the type of uh, of dishes that we make. It's uh, different. Most of the people who come to try it, they've never tasted it before. So it's also it made me realize how hard it is to pioneer anything because you are always you always have to do a convincing work and. It makes you want to go and open um, I don't want to overheat that so that's why I'm putting it in now and then and I love it to be a little bit creamy so I add a bit of uh, coconut cream you know this is the secret of being a great chef because they say a little bit and your little bit and my little bit, we, it never comes out the same. But they know the exact quantities. <laughs> or they'll be like, a teaspoon of vanilla, but they're pouring. You're like, yeah, exactly. where's a teaspoon? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I cook off, off, off recipes a lot and I, I, I follow them quite religiously in terms of the directions because I'm scared that if I put in a tablespoon of vanilla essence. <laughs> it will completely ruin the dish versus the two teaspoons they tell you. You know, those, sort of, those sorts of things. But uh, you as chefs, just, you feel it. You, I, I cook, to be honest. I write recipes because I have to. I don't cook with recipes. I've never cooked <laughs> with a recipe. I, I just go in the kitchen and make something. Then when I need to write a recipe of it, I just have to repeat it again and then have to measure and all those things. But it's... My, my, my mother is like that. You can never, ever get the same dish because she, she, she doesn't work from recipes. She just creates as she goes. But that's the thing. I, I feel like I always get the same dish because I, I just, I know it. Mm. Like... Muscle memory. I can I can feel the amount of salt I have. By a show in. of hands, in a small uh, room of people, who who cooks using recipes? Who, who like me needs to have the recipe to guide you? Just the two of us, ma'am. Uh, three maybe. The rest of us, we are just with flair. Hey, we just ah, whatever. Lovely. Look at us. <laughs> experts i just want to add a little bit of a little bit of uh, zest <laughs> just to add that freshness mm. 
We are almost there and it's actually looking nice. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of more salt. I tasted and I, I really believe it needs a little bit more salt. It's like saying one table, half a teaspoon of salt. We all have got our different salt intake. I've never put in a recipe the amount of salt you should put in. I just feel like it's to taste. Um, I don't know how we are going to taste this. If, but it looks really good. If you want to come and check it out, please do. So good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Should I put it in a bowl first? Hmm? This one. This one. Oh, that one. This. This one. Okay. 